today what I'm going to talk about is something that is not too pleasant, but something that I thought needs to be addressed. And this has something to do, also, of course, also with my visit to the Philippines, and that is the issue of diabetics in the Philippines. I am not speaking to you as a doctor. I'm speaking to you as a patient. I am diabetic myself and therefore if I wish if I could reverse this condition I'll be very happy person the happiest person on earth as a matter of fact but that's what we're going to talk about and what I observed while I was in the Philippines stay with me we'll talk about it I was in the Philippines and I was having eating a meal with one of our relatives and I was watching him eat and I did notice that on his plate is a whole bunch of rice about 90% of his plate is rice and maybe only about 10% is what you call ulam viand and I said is that is that what you eat? And he says, oh yeah, because I will not survive without eating this rice. Now, although I'm overwhelmed, I said to myself, gee, I wonder if this is what I ate too when I was in the Philippines during my tw first 20 years of my life. And I probably did, but I was not conscious because that's how we ate. That's how it is. In fact, I do remember at the time when we would eat rice with lard, lard, okay, and then put some patis and mix it. That's our meal. Well, special meal. <laughs> but I was not aware of possible complications of diabetes. So, I did some research and I'm going to share with you what I found out. I was really overwhelmed. Let's take a look at it. So I did uh, internet research and I said this, oh, by the way, this is from the Inquirer, just recently, June 22nd, 2023. So just about a week ago. The yearly hemodialysis coverage in Philippine Health Insurance Corporation PhilHealth has been expanded for 100, from 144 to 156 sessions, the state-run uh, state institution announced. I'm going to talk to you about what dialysis is all about. But that's nice. Uh, I don't even think we have that kind of benefit in the U.S. Uh, you better have some insurance uh, because once you start hemodialysis, it's hard to get out of it if you can get out of it at all. But they're increasing the number of sessions from 144 to 156 free, state-funded. The expansion that translates to 12 more additional sessions for patients took effect on Thursday. The yearly hemodialysis coverage of PhilHealth has been expanded from 144 to 156 sessions, the state line institution announced. Oh, that's just a repeat. The expansion that translates to 12 more additional sessions for patients took effect on Thursday. And I have the source, except for my commentaries. PhilHealth should encourage and pay for annual or biannual every six months tests for detection and prevention of diabetes and to make people aware of the dangers of diabetes instead of increasing the benefit of treatment of diabetes. Uh, I don't know if the word treatment is the right one because once you get into a dialysis situation, it will no longer be solved, ended, or whatever. And I'm not saying that PhilHealth does not have this free. I'm just saying if it is not free, it should be free. I'm talking about the blood work, the blood test. And what it will do is it will encourage people to have a blood test for free. Even the poor people in the Philippines will, could get blood work. And they will be aware. And they could take care of themselves, hopefully. Now, this is another one. Let me explain. Dialysis is a procedure to remove waste products and excess fluid from the blood when the kidneys stop working properly. It often involves diverting blood to a machine to be cleaned. So they take it out of your body, the blood, clean it out, and then put it back in. Because your body stopped doing the job 
kidneys stop working properly properly due to diabetes or hypertension and people with diabetes usually develops hypertension as well so not everybody that goes through dialysis is because of diabetes okay uh, but most of the time it is because they say gee you know he had hypertension but people who have diabetes also come come up with hypertension and diabetes also causes blindness stroke so you can't say oh gee you know I did not have diabetes I had stroke no, but usually it's caused by diabetes myth they say no I mean they say dialysis is a death sentence I say that Okay? And then they say, no, dialysis is a life sentence. When you, your family and doctor decides that it's time for you to undergo dialysis, what you're all saying is that you want to live your life and feel better. I don't know about feeling better, but you want to live, yes, because you will survive instead of dying uh, right away of something. Uh, you go through this three times a week, maybe two, one to three hours each session, cleaning up your system what does that mean it's a life sentence you're in that machine for life feel better i don't think you'll feel better i know somebody who's oh, it's just so drowsy has headaches and all that after each session so it could be far worse than just dying some people up to die after undergoing through uh, so many sessions of dialysis so i say once you get into a dialysis machine it's a life sentence now i am not aware of anyone who undergo dialysis treatment and got out of it please do share down in the comment down below if you did for my own education and others as well if you say uh, if, if you had a dialysis treatment you went undergo dialysis then you got out of it and now you'll perfect your normal human being please let us know by commenting down below but i am not aware of one but i could be wrong why do filipinos have high rates of diabetes in the united states now this is in the u.s not in the philippines 16 percent of filipino men as opposed to 6.1 percent of the overall male population have type 2 diabetes that means most of the people in the six percent of Filipinos, ninety to ninety-five percent with uh, of the, of people with diabetes are type two. Now, what is type two? Type one. If you are born and you already have diabetes, that's type one. That means you already had a defect from from birth. Type two is well, you live a normal life maybe for the first 30, 40, 50 years, and then you gradually develop diabetes. That is type two. That is the one that could be controlled. When you're born with diabetes, sometimes, I don't think sometimes, I think all the time, you have it for life. Although Filipinos have a higher rate of obesity, uh, which is a surprise to me, a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes, compared to overall U.S. population, even non-obese Filipinos are more likely to acquire type 2 diabetes. I am non-obese. I'm skinny, as you can see. I'm skinny. But I have type 2 diabetes. Hmm. Overconsumption of refined carbohydrate, that is white rice, can raise blood glucose level and increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. However, the qualitative studies have found that Filipinos who reduce white rice intake are socially viewed as rejecting Filipino culture. These findings exemplify how difficult it is for Filipinos to make the necessary dietary changes to reduce their risk of type 2 diabetes. Let me tell you, we went to the restaurant one time and they said, okay, after ordering our food, they said, okay, how much rice do you need? We said, one cup, and that's for both of us. One cup? That's, uh, yeah, we don't eat much rice. They said, okay. See how surprised they are? Because that is telling me, that's very telling, okay? That's telling me that most Filipinos say two, three, three, okay? And then they, here we come, and we say, oh, only one cup for both of us. That's music to their ears. The small signals like that tell me what the custom is in the Philippines today, maybe even before. 
What is the percentage of diabetes in the Philippines? Now, this is shocking. Data shows that the, prevalent, the prevalence of diabetes in the Philippines increased from 5.6% from 6 to 8% in 2019, 2020-2019. Around 14% of the population already have pre-diabetes. We're going to talk about that. Combining the prevalence of diabetes and pre-diabetes, one out of every five Filipinos have abnormal glucose levels, that is, including those who are not diabetic yet. So when you're diabetic, that means you already hit that percentage of glucose in your blood to consider you diabetic. Pre-diabetic means it's still lower than that, but you're slightly, is, uh, is slightly getting to slide into that diabetic stage. You can still control it, but in all likelihood, in many cases, you will slide into diabetic stage. So even though you're not diabetic yet, you are a candidate to become diabetic. That's a total, combining the prevalence, that's a total of, what did they say? One out of every five Filipinos. Look around you and look at five Filipinos and see if one of them is diabetic or pre-diabetic. That's a lot. That's a lot. <sighs> what percentage of U.S. population have type 2 diabetes? Now, this is just to compare, but the, the two are not really comparable, because, but these are the statistics I found. More than 37 million of Americans have diabetes, about 1 in 10. Filipinos, 5 in 10. However, this is not comparable because they're talking about those with diabetes that does not count the pre-diabetic. And approximately 90-95% have type 2. Type 2 diabetes, that's why we are going to talk about type 2, forget about type 1, type 2. Type 2 diabetes most often develops in people over age 45. I think I was diagnosed when I was between 45 and 50. Type 2 diabetes most often develops in people over age 55, but more and more children, teens and young adults are develop, developing it. There are several things that causes you to develop diabetes. You eat too much carbohydrate, that means high sugar levels, sugar content. Uh, your body, because of genetics, let's say your parents had diabetes, so genetics, which is cannot be avoided, uh, tend to develop diabetes and therefore you are also likely to develop diabetes. And also, uh, with, if you're sedentary, uh, like I was an accountant and I was always on the table before and uh, I don't exercise, I did not have any exercise, I started traveling and when I'm traveling, I'm running around, I sort of I'm exercising, although I don't go to the gym, I, my body do get some exercise, but then at night I eat company paid meals all the time, so I eat good, I ate good. So I tended to overdo that. When I was in Mexico, I was living in Mexico in my own apartment and I'm alone because my family is in Philadelphia. Uh, every night, my, I had a live in maid in, uh, in Mexico City and she offered to cook for me and I said, no, it's okay. I just go out and eat in restaurants. And, and many times I'm entertaining employees, uh, vendors and uh, customers. So I do entertain a lot in the, because of my position in the company, of course. And I tended to eat a lot. I gained weight. I gained weight. When, after Mexico, you know, I tried to reduce my diet. I became slimmer and now I'm very slim. Uh, so... That's how I got it. That's how I got it. The prevalence of chronic dis uh, kidney disease, that's called CKD, okay? In Asia, countries is reported to be among the highest in the world. And as of 2016, has emerged one of the leading cause of death. The Philippines is particularly, in particular, has experienced a large rise in prevalence of dialysis with an approximate increase of 400%, about 7.5% compounded year after year over the past 10 years. In fact, kidney failure and early stages of CKD has become one of the leading cause of hospitalizations and is now the 10th leading cause of mortality in the country. Hmm. Despite its high prevalence, it's unfortunate. It unfortunately remains 
a low priority in most low and middle income countries. So those statistics I gave you, the percentage and all that, that's only for people who are taking blood tests. If they do blood tests, then they will be part of the pool to measure how much of them have diabetes. Now let me ask you this. How many of the Filipinos are not getting blood work? They may have diabetes. They don't even know about it. See, the problem with diabetes is once you get it, you don't know it. You don't feel anything. So you may not be aware. People may not be aware that they have diabetes. But they should be part of pre-diabetic or even diabetic. Had they known about it? And that is the reason I say, gee, Philippines should encourage that blood work. Like, like what I said, I'm not saying that it is not paid for by PhilHealth. It should be paid for by PhilHealth. That will give Filipinos the awareness of diabetes. Again, diabetes does not kill you. But because of diabetes, it will lead to something that will kill you. So, my commentary, and this is why I would encourage PhilHealth to, to cover the cost of annual by annual blood work to encourage preventive preventive uh, treatment and awareness not when people people are already dead or have CKD. Now I'm not saying that CKD is bad. I think CKD is good. So the fact that they cover uh, chronic kidney uh, uh, disease uh, treatment uh, is good. What is normal now of course you ask your question uh, you ask the question well, what is normal blood sugar reading after a meal? Now, here is one oral glucose test. You need to eat for a certain amount of time and then drink sugary liquid at your healthcare provided office. I did not go through this, but I, I, I read that this is one of it. Blood sugar levels that are tested periodically for two hours. The results are interpreted as follows. Less than 140 milligrams after two hours, considered healthy. 140 to 199 milligrams, that's the amount of sugar that's in your body, in your blood, is diagnosed as pre-diabetes. 200 plus, higher or higher, plus uh, after two hours, suggest diabetes. That is how you measure diabetes. For the longest time, I've been using it or checking up uh, first thing in the morning uh, after you wake up. Uh, I prick my finger and measure the amount of blood sugar using this machine. You know, you insert the test strip and then put some bl uh, blood in it and it will tell me how much blood sugar I have in my system. I do that several times a day. Uh, First thing in the morning when I wake up before any meal, before eating, uh, I measure it and about two hours later I measure it again and to see if the elevation is high and see if it's dropping. Uh, that requires so many times of pricking my finger with needle to get the blood. So now I'm using a different machine called Freestyle Libre. And with this machine, this machine will show you the trend. I don't know if you can see it. See how my blood spiked, let's say, this morning? This is after meals. It's about 200. And then, of course, the more important thing is how quickly does it drop back down? And all I have to do to get that information is to do this. Listen. I have a sensor connected to my body that checks the blood sugar level every minute. It accumulates it in memory and once I did that scan, it transferred the information down to my machine. And right now I'm at 215. It was 255 and it dropped down to 215. So you can see, this is good for 14 days. And every time I check, I can see the trend, minute by minute trend, although I only check it maybe five, six times a day, just to make sure I'm not going overboard, uh, I don't have to stick my finger with a needle because that thing hurts. <laughs>
So anyway, that is what I wanted to share with you that I think, I hope that Filipinos will become conscious about diabetes, something that's a long term. I remember when my doctor said to me, I have a good news and a bad news. She said, the, the good news is it's very easy to control diet, lifestyle change, maybe some medication. The bad news, he said to me, and this was years ago, when the first time I was diagnosed with diabetes, he said the bad news is there is no cure for it. We just need to slow down, slow down the process of this thing going up so high that then you develop complications in the eye, in your lungs, in your kidneys, in your heart. and That is the idea to slow it down, but it can never be reversed. Now, some people say that they were able to reverse it, they were able to adjust it. I don't know. Again, if you're one of those people who had diabetes and now you're no longer diabetic, no longer diabetic, meaning free, you don't take any medication. But of course, continuing good lifestyle is okay. I'll appreciate it if you had a comment because I, I want to know and I need to know. So that's all I can share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps other people uh, before they become really diabetic to do something about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll appreciate it if you click like on this video and God bless and make it a great day.